This is a rapid fire video going over holster related terms, concepts, attachments, materials. Here we go. Kydex, Bolteron, Holstex, and Royal Light are the four major plastics that are used for these style of holsters that I make. Kydex is the most popular and its name has become somewhat generic like Kleenex. People will say Kydex holster even though the manufacturer may use Bolteron or Holstex. Kydex and Bolteron are the big two. OWB stands for outside the waistband. It means the holster is worn on the outside of your belt. This is an example of an OWB pancake style holster. You would thread the belt through it and the holster would be worn outside like this. IWB refers to inside the waistband. This is an example of an IWB holster. It would actually be worn down inside the pants and these snap loops would allow it to attach to the belt. AIWB means appendix inside the waistband and it refers to a specific carry position. The holster is worn inside the waistband and in the appendix position, which means forward of the hip. If you're a right-handed shooter, anywhere up here. If you're a left-handed shooter, anywhere up here. That's AIWB. Cross draw refers to wearing it across the center line from your dominant or shooting hand. As a right-handed shooter, a cross draw holster would mount here. They're fairly popular in vehicles. They're kind of not effective for most kinds of concealed carry. I don't run across them very often and don't recommend them. Strong side. This is your traditional inside or outside, at or behind the hip, on the same side as your dominant hand or your shooting hand. Very popular, lots of holster makers make them. Drop legs and mid drops. These are two kinds of holsters that are specifically not for concealment. I don't have an example of either one in the shop because I don't make them. Drop legs are worn usually down on the thigh. Mid drops are a little higher. They're outside the waistband holsters. You see them in a lot of law enforcement and military applications. They are not for concealment. Full firing grip. Full firing grip, this is a cert pistol, is how you're going to hold the gun when you actually go to shoot it and you want a holster that allows you to form a full firing grip when the gun is still in the holster. Firearms in the video have already been cleared. Here's a G34 holstered up. When I go to draw it out, I wanna form my full firing grip with my hand up in the beaver tail, fingers high, thumb in place. So when I draw the firearm, I'm ready to build my support hand grip in and then go right to firing. That's a full firing grip. Your holster should allow you to get one anytime you grab the gun. Foamy clip. This is a popular attachment. I've also seen it called a fat clip or a wide clip. Foamy is a particular brand designed and made by Multi Holsters. Another similar hol clip is called the Quick Clip from DIY Holster. These are very popular for inside the waistband holsters. A wing. A wing is a leverage device most commonly seen on appendix holsters. This holster has one mounted up. This is a mod wing. This is another very popular one, the RCS Raven Consumant Vanguard 2 wing. It acts as a leverage device. Your belt presses on the front of it and rotates the grip of the gun in towards your hip. It's used in conjunction with a wedge, which this holster also has. Many appendix-specific holsters have started featuring either molded-in wedges, as this is, or add-on wedges out of foam, silicone, some other kind of soft material. The point of the wedge is to tip the muzzle of the holster out, and the wing rotates the grip of the holster in. Suppressor height sights. Suppressor height sights are commonly seen on pistols that have red dot optics like this. These are suppressor height sights. They are taller than your standard sights, so you can somewhat co-witness them through the optic. They won't be up at the same height as the dot, but you can still see them through the optic window if for any reason your battery dies, your glass goes out, something happens, and your optic is not functioning. Screw post. Screws and screw posts are like peanut butter and jelly. They're the hardware that holds your holster together. Here's a screw. You guys have seen these before, pretty common. A screw post is the female portion that the screw threads into, and they're used on opposite sides of the holster normally to attach things. So here we have screw posts on the front, screws on the back, and those are working to attach this mod wing. Ambi. This is a feature you'll see holster makers describe. It's short for ambidextrous. It means the holster can be worn by a right or left-handed shooter. Usually it means the holster is reversible, although typically that involves swapping some hardware from side to side, so you have to take out the screws and screw posts, move the belt attachments around, and reattach them. Tuckable. The holster I'm wearing here is tuckable. My shirt was tucked in over it. It uses a kind of clip that allows the fabric of the shirt to be put down over the gun but behind the clip. Very popular for more deep concealment applications. Hybrid. I don't have an example of a hybrid holster for this video, but it typically refers to a holster made out of some plastic materials and then either some kind of fabric, synthetic, rubber, or, Velcro, uh, or leather, sometimes Velcro is involved, but a flexible backer. This is very common primary styles. You'll see alien gear, crossbreed, stealth gear. It typically spreads your belt attachments out very far 
and they're commonly carried strong side. There are a few appendix style hybrid holsters out there. My company started making hybrid holsters way back in the day. I don't make them anymore. I think there are better options on the market. Modular. This is a buzzword. When you see holster makers talk about a holster being modular, be a little bit concerned because oftentimes any holster that tries to be a jack of all trades does end up being a master of none. So modular isn't necessarily a bonus, although if it just means you can swap a couple different kinds of attachments on or off the same basic holster shell to wear it in the same basic position, that level of versatility is sometimes good. A holster that can be worn cross straw or strong side, appendix, inside or outside, drop leg around your ankle or behind your hat, not good. Can't. Can't refers to the angle of the gun in relation to your belt line. If you're straight up and down, that's called a zero degree can't or a straight drop. Can't is usually described as straight, forward, or reverse. As a right-handed shooter, forward can't would be as the gun comes behind my hip, the slide of the gun tips forward. This is just for ergonomics. This is the way our body works. It's hard to draw straight up back here. It's easier to draw up at an angle. Reverse can't. As the gun comes forward, I will tend to turn the slide back. And so cross draw holsters normally have a reverse cant. Appendix holsters are normally worn with straight drop or a slight reverse cant. Uh, the term FBI cant refers to a fairly strong forward cant in the strong side position. It doesn't have any particular number. Like people are like, oh, it's 22 or 25 degrees. It just means a strong forward cant. The FBI doesn't have any rules about that. Muzzle. Open, closed, and partial are your three options. Here's an example of a closed muzzle on an outside the waistband holster. Here's an open muzzle on an inside the waistband holster. The advantage of the open muzzle in a lot of applications is it means you can put a longer version of the gun through and it will still clear. If you have a closed muzzle, then where that muzzle closes determines the maximum length of the gun that can go in. In gun families like the Glock family, where you have a bunch of different available slide lengths within a single caliber or a family of gun sizes, having an open muzzle can mean you can run multiple different guns in the same holster without having to get extra holsters for the longer guns. Uh, partial muzzle, partially closed muzzle would be like this. It's not fully sealed off, but you can't put a longer gun through. But dirt and other small stuff that gets in there will be able to fall through. Sweat guard. This is the portion of the holster that comes up along the back, inside at the top, and a full sweat guard will come up like this one does, all the way to the top of the slide of the gun. A partial sweat guard will come up part of the way. My personal preference is for partial sweat guards. I find them easier to build my full firing grip because the sweat guard is then not in between my thumb and the gun. Retention. Retention refers to the characteristic of the holster where it locks onto the firearm in some way. Retention can be very, very light or very heavy, and that is a function of how the holster is shaped and molded. If you hear that click when the gun is fully seated is when it makes it past the molded point that locks in at the trigger guard, this dimple here, which we would call a retention point. Some holsters have fixed retention, some have adjustable. This holster has adjustable retention because we have a screw and a post with a rubber spacer one of these little guys, a bushing, in between, and as you tighten the screw, you pull the two halves of the holster together, which contracts the trigger guard and increases how tightly the holster bites onto the gun. This holster has fixed retention. The two edges of the holster meet flush, and there's no ability to adjust it. This is separate from active or passive retention. These two holsters have passive retention and that there are no moving parts or latches or levers that have to be activated or deactivated for the holster to be used. This is an example of a Safari Land duty style rig, and I guess you would actually call this a mid-drop holster because it rides fairly low in relation to the belt, but it has an entire latch system activated by this thumb lever. So to actually draw the firearm out, you have to activate that lever and then draw the firearm. This is active retention. It's very commonly seen in law enforcement and military applications. And I strongly recommend that if you're going to open carry, I think you should have a holster that has active retention to give you some protection from gun grabs. RMR cuts or optic cuts. It's becoming very popular to put red dot optics on pistols, as you see this Trijicon SRO on this G34. Some holsters are cut so that there's clearance for the holster to fit around the optic. Other holsters are not. This is an example of a non-optic cut holster. So if I had a SIG P320 with a Romeo 1 optic on it and tried to holster it up in here, the optic would hit this material here and the gun would not seat fully. 
non-optic cut holsters can provide a little more comfort and protection from sharp corners, especially on your rear sights. If you don't have an optic, that extra comfort may be worth it. If you do intend to carry an optic, you need a holster with an optic cut. Some makers call them RMR cuts, optic cuts, RDS, which is red dot sight cuts, etc. Attachments, snap loops. These holsters have snap loops. It is a strip of biothane coated webbing with a mil-spec pull-the-dot snap. So it goes under the belt and then over the front, and you snap it in place. These are flexible, adjustable for belt size. I like these a lot. A strut. A strut is usually an injection-molded plastic component that is used to attach a soft loop to a holster so that the holster can be worn in a tuckable fashion. Here's an example of a soft loop on a strut. This is a Filster tuck strut that has an integrated wing feature, and the soft loop is attached to it. Overhooks. These are very popular. The holster I'm wearing now has a Discrete Carry Concepts Mod 4 overhook. Here's another popular overhook from Raven Concealment Systems, RCS. It attaches to the holster down here and then slips over the belt, and this tab on the inside, eh, that tab right there, locks onto the belt from the underside and secures the holster. They're usually a little bit faster to get on and off than soft loop holsters, but they don't hold quite as tightly. Those are called overhooks, typically. A J-hook is basically a reverse overhook. I don't have an example here because I think they're generally pretty lousy and I don't recommend them. But a J-hook actually comes down behind the belt and instead of reaching over the belt and hooking under like an overhook would, a J-hook comes down behind the belt and just toes under the front and hooks there. It's a little less visible on the belt if you're wearing your shirt tucked in, but it's also much less secure. It doesn't have a complete grip around the belt. It's on the pants and behind the belt and just under the tip. And that's not as secure an option. So that's my quick rundown right at the 12-minute mark. Whole bunch of holster-making terms. If you think of any I forgot, leave them in the comments.